wind. La 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 la. Neftali awoke to Rodolfo, singing scales. Usually, he loved Rodolfo's voice, but not this morning. Father thought singing was a disruption. If father was upset, he could easily withdraw a permission he had already granted. Would he still let Neftali go to school today? Neftali sprang from his bed, dressed, and ran to Rodolfo's room. His big brother stood in front of the dresser, his dark hair disheveled, hands clasped at his chest, and his short, muscular body standing as tall as he could make it. His tongue flapped the notes. La 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 la. Rodolfo! Neftali put one finger over his mouth as a warning, but it was too late. Father's voice boomed through the house. Rodolfo! Stop that useless noise at once! Rodolfo rolled his eyes, grabbed his jacket, and hurried past Neftali. Neftali sighed, imagining the lecture to come. He pinched his cheeks to make them look healthier, then followed Rodolfo to the kitchen. When he arrived, family was already seated. Rodolfo looked intently at his food and avoided father's eyes. Mamadre passed Lorita the fig jam for her bread. Neftali pulled out his chair and quietly sat down. Maybe there would not be a confrontation. Rodolfo, on the days I have been home the last month, all I have heard is your singing, father lectured. If you have so much extra time, you should spend it on your studies. But, Rodolfo began, his eyes darting from father to Mamadre. Quietly, Mamadre nodded and said, you must tell him. Rodolfo took a deep breath and looked at father. I, I am rehearsing for a performance at school, and father leaned forward. And what? My teacher and the headmaster say that if I study music, I might be able to get a scholarship to the conservatory. Father sat down his fork. I promise you that no son of mine will go to a music conservatory. Rodolfo protested. But, but they... Father slammed his fist on the table. Startled, Rodolfo jumped. Neftali slid down in his chair. Lorita reached for Mamadre's hand. Jose, said Mamadre, you think Rodolfo shows great promise? He is 15 years old. In a few years he will be on his own. This diversion will serve him no purpose, nor assure him a job. Father picked up, the, father picked up his fork and shook it at Rodolfo. I will not allow you to suffer more than my fate. For years I was a poor laborer, wandering from town to town to find work. Neftali and Rodolfo exchanged looks and their shoulders sag. They had heard this story many times before. I struggled to put food on the table and to save money, continued father. Finally, the railroad position came along and served me and his family very well. But it is no life for you. It is time to get serious about your future. You will study business or medicine. This is what I had done, I would have done if I had been given the chance. There will be no more wasting time on music. He turned to Mamadre. Send a note to his teacher. Rodolfo closed his eyes. When he opened them, his lashes were wet. Left Tali looked down at his plate. He did not want to make it worse for Rodolfo by staring at him. 
Now you finish your breakfast so that you can walk Naftali to school. And make sure he arrives before the bell. We have already had one letter about his tardiness this year. It is not my fault if he wants to stop and collect every stupid thing, muttered Rodolfo. Make sure that he does not, said Father. His mind needs to be filled with facts and figures, just like yours, or he will always be a fanatic. And make certain he stays warm so he does not get sick again. Neftali looked from Rodolfo to Father. Could they not see him sitting there? He wished he had the courage to tell Father that he did not collect every stupid thing. He collected important things. And was Father right? Was he a fanatic? As they put on their coats by the front door, Rodolfo faced Neftali. You heard, Father. Put on your mittens. Neftali hesitated. His hands felt trapped inside mittens. They prevented him from picking up small treasures. He glanced up. Father could see them from where he still sat at the table. Reluctantly, Neftali held out his hands while Rodolfo shoved the wool over his fingers. Then Neftali reached for his favorite hat, an old green oilskin that Father had given him. When he wore it, he imagined absorbing all of Father's authority through the brim. Are you really going to wear that ridiculous hat? said Rodolfo. Everyone will think you are a dunce. Neftali stood straighter and pulled the hat on tighter. Annoyed, Rodolfo threw up his arms. It is no wonder that you have no friends. He took Neftali's hand and led him out the door. Like a determined toad, Rodolfo navigated the muddy street by leaping from stone to stone, pulling Neftali along behind him. Neftali slid his hand from his brother's firm grip. Keep up with me, called Rodolfo. But Neftali had already stopped to examine a clump of knotted roots protruding from the base of a beech tree. Rodolfo went back, took his hand, and tugged him toward the schoolyard. Neftali tried to keep up, but then he saw the lonely boot that Lorita had described yesterday from the window. He jerked his hand from Rodolfo's and ran to retrieve it. Rodolfo caught up to him, grabbed his arm, and pulled him up. You are dim-witted! Why must we stop at every brainless thing? Can you not walk like other boys? Rodolfo pushed him along until Neftali dug his heels into the ground and pointed at the sky. What now? demanded Rodolfo. A strong gust of wind had snatched away an umbrella. It rocked and swayed in flight. Neftali stood hypnotized. It is an umbrella. Nothing more. Let us go. Rodolfo showed him, shoved him into the yard of the boys' school. Then Aviento grabbed the oilskin hat, lifted it from Neftali's head, and tossed it back and forth. Neftali pulled away from Rodolfo and ran to capture it, but each time he lunged forward, the wind swept it up again, as if playing keep away. Neftali thought he heard the wind roar, until he realized it was Rodolfo and a group of boys laughing and pointing at his feeble attempts. Helpless, he watched the wind steal his hat until the green oil skin vanished into the highest reaches of the Arachanian woods. Arachanian woods. When Neftali finally turned toward the ridicule, he tried to puff up his chest and walk taller. But without Father's hat, the feeling of authority was gone. A teacher stood on the steps of the old mansion, converted to a schoolhouse, and rang the bell. The boys ran toward their classes. Neftali hurried forward, but then he pointed. He noticed a beetle on a spotted leaf. He pulled off the mittens, tossed them aside, and bent down to expect it. He heard a sigh above him. Come on, 
Neftali, it will not be good for either of, the, either of us if you are late. Neftali looked up into Rodolfo's imploring face. He took his hand. Where are your mittens? Neftali turned to where he had left them, but they were gone. <sighs> no matter, said Rodolfo. Hurry, they're closing the door. But, but, but Father will... Good riddance, Rodolfo spat on the ground. Now we cannot force you to wear them. Come! Neftali ran inside on the heels of Rodolfo. But before he went to his classroom, he peeked out of the hallway window and saw that the wind had also possessed his mittens. They looked like ghostly hands waving goodbye in the Chilean sky. Where were they headed? Whose hands would they cover next? As Neftali watched the mittens fly away, he felt as if a small piece of himself had taken flight too. Would that part of him ever have a friend? Or amount to anything? He waved and whispered, Adios. What does the wind give? What does the wind take away? Where is the storehouse of lost and found? On this page, I ask you to write a story or a description of what is your relationship like with your with a sibling. Is it the same as Rodolfo and Neftali? Is it different? How is it the same? How is it different? And try and spend some time just to sort of exploring in complete sentences what your relationship with your brother or sister is like. And if you have more than one brother or sister, pick one and write about them. And if you don't have a brother or sister, imagine if you had a brother or sister. What would be good about it? What would be bad about it? Why would you want a brother or sister? Or why wouldn't you want a brother or sister? And write that and post it to Seesaw.